All right, folks, it's time for a rant. Hulk smash. There is only one chain rule, but so many old-fashioned calculus textbooks say there are many chain rules depending on how many inputs and outputs you have. No way. That is total baloney. That is not true. None of these uh, dependency trees or any of this stuff matters. There's only one chain rule, there's only one thing that you have to use, and that's matrix multiplication. Let's look at some classical chain rules that old textbooks say you have to memorize. They'll say, oh, well, if you have a function uh, y that depends on many inputs, x1, x2, up through xn, and each of those depends on time, then the derivative of y with respect to t is really the sum of uh, partials of y with respect to the x's times the, the derivative of those x's with respect to t's. Um, no, you don't have to memorize that. You can derive it. It's not hard. Try it. We basically did this with that problem involving the rectangular prism and the, and the volume. It's really a row matrix times a column matrix. That's all there is to it. Thank you, chain rule. Or let's say you've got a function u with two inputs, x and y, but x and y each depend on s and t. The old-fashioned calculus books will make you memorize. The partial u with respect to s is uh, partial u, partial x, partial x, partial... Uh, I can't even say it. Oh, gosh. What a mess. And uh, same thing with t. And why is it this way? Why do you add them? Why don't you subtract? What? I mean, yeah, you can say, oh, fine, uh, partial x's kind of cancel and partial y's kind of cancel, but that's not a reason. What's the reason? The reason is the chain rule. Let's do this second one in detail. Let's say you've got u that depends on x and y. x and y each depend on s and t. Let's lay things out cleanly carefully. Let's say that g is the function that takes s and t to x and y, and then f is the function that takes x and y to u. Let's compute some derivatives. So we start off with u as a function f of x and y. What's the derivative of f? It's the partial of u with respect to x and the partial of u with respect to y in a row matrix. Now, what about the function g that takes s and t to x and y? Well, the derivative of g is going to be a 2 by 2 matrix. That is, the uh, partials with respect to s in the first column and the partials with respect to t in the second column. Okay, now, what does the chain rule say? The chain rule says that the derivative of the composition is the product of these two matrices in the proper order. So take the derivative of f, that row matrix, times the derivative of g, that 2 by 2 matrix. And now, what do you do? You know how to do matrix multiplication, right? So multiply it out and look at what we get. We get those two formulae precisely, carefully, cleanly. And what is this? This is the derivative of u with respect to the s and t variables. Namely, the first term is partial u partial s, and the second term is partial u partial t. That's it. One derivation gives both formulae. Matrix multiplication regulates what has happened. Everything flows from this one chain rule. No need to memorize a whole bunch of stuff and draw boxes around things and draw graphs with dependencies. Just use matrix multiplication and just be careful with your variables. You're going to be fine.